Hi guys, how's it going? So today, back with another review. Uh, after having a lot of fun making the review of La La Land at the beginning of this year, I thought I'd do it again for Spider-Man Homecoming. Mainly because this is another film that has very successfully earned its place as uh, one of my favourite films of all time. I will be referring to a script as kind of... It's, I'm not going to fully keep to the script that I've wrote, but I'll be kind of looking down and referencing it uh, to keep me on track so I don't end up on some huge tangent about something that's completely unrelated to uh, the film, which is quite possible as I do tend to talk a lot. <laughs> well, with no further ado, let's crack on with this review. Uh, it's going to be a slightly different structure to the La La Land review where I kind of broke down key elements, so I went through cinematography, editing and such and broke it down very much almost like an essay style for like uh, college, a similar kind of breakdown to how I did that stuff. For this, I'm going to kind of just talk about key plot points and I will hit things like the cinematography, editing and such within those key points of the plot. Um, this does mean, of course, that this is a spoiler filled review. This is a spoiler review. If you have not seen the film, go watch it. Then come back to this, you can click down below and hit the button to add this to your watch later. If you do not want anything spoiled, do not watch this until you have seen the movie. That is your only warning. Let's go on with this review. First and foremost, Tom Holland. Uh, as many of you will probably he have heard by now, he's loved by pretty much everybody, including critics and fans of both the comics and the MCU. He is a wonderful Peter Parker. He really, really captures this character as I've read him in the comics. And it's probably the best representation of the web slinger we have seen on screen. Uh, he's clearly young. You know, Tom Holland is 21, but they've definitely made him look a lot younger. And he's acting a lot younger, so he really does pull off the kind of 15-year-old that he's meant to be in this film. He's charismatic, he's overdramatic, he's awkward, he doesn't stop talking during fights. And that is very much the young, not-quite-professional Spidey that a lot of people know and love from the comics and that's who that character is meant to embody. Uh, Holland really did nail the character. Um, he wasn't edgy and weird like Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. He wasn't as arrogant and cocky as Andrew Garfield. Um, don't get me wrong, I did and really enjoy some of the moments and some and a large portion of the aspects of both the original Spider-Man trilogy and the Amazing Spider-Man um, films, assuming we completely ignore Spider-Man 3's existence, but we'll not get onto that. But they really didn't capture the web slinger the way that Tom Holland has. They were both way older than the character, and they just didn't. None of it felt like it was high school. You know, at 15, like, I remember what I was like at 15, so I'm still close enough to that age to pretty much remember it. And Tom Holland plays a 15 year old nerd, much the way that I remember being a 15 year old nerd. Of course, we get a preview of his of this take on the character in Captain America: Civil War from last year, uh, which got me very excited because what we saw in that definitely gave me high hopes for Tom Holland's crack at the role. And speaking of which, the vlog style opening of Homecoming showing Peter's perspective of the Civil War events was a really nice touch. I thought that was brilliant. And I felt this was exactly something that a 15 year old kid might be doing if he was called up by Iron Man, brought to Germany, and told he had to fight Captain America. Uh, as I say, Tom Holland himself is 21, which is six years older than Peter Parker's in this film, but I think. He looks kind of the right age. He could maybe not quite 15, but combining how young he looks and the way he acts, I think he definitely... It doesn't feel wrong. Whereas looking at Tobey Maguire, I always felt he looked way too old to be like a high school student. But, you know, that's obviously up to uh, opinion. As I say, this is my review. I really enjoyed Tom Holland's take on the character. 
Another actor in this who was unsurprisingly brilliant was Michael Keaton's Vulture. Uh, this performance has to go down in uh, at least comic book movie history and potentially even one of Keaton's best performances. Uh, he took on the role of Adrian Toomes for this and it just far surpassed my already high expectations of what he'd bring to the character after seeing 2014's Birdman which was a brilliant film and uh, I'd go watch that as well if you uh, want another brilliant film to watch that has Michael Keaton in it. Um, in Homecoming, Toomes' motivations are scarily down to earth. They did really well making this character so relatable to probably a huge amount of the audience, especially you know, parents who don't have quite as much money or are struggling or who've been through hard times. He represents that very much. He's a guy doing what needs to be done to provide for his family. It's not always the best choices. Morally, it's not great, but he's doing what needs to be done so that he keeps a roof over his wife and daughter's head, which I think is just, like, he can't argue with it, which makes him terrifying, because you can see why he's doing certain things, and you're like, okay, yeah, if I was presented with the same opportunity, I might do the same, which is just... The way Keaton kind of captures that is phenomenal. And there's one scene specifically where Keaton's performance really did show its best and Marvel's storytelling really was uh, fantastic. Um, the scene where Peter found out that Adrian is Liz Allen's dad slash Adrian realising that Peter is Spider-Man. That entire sequence is phenomenal. It's from when he gets out of the car to go take Liz to prom or homecoming rather, all the way up to when he gets out of the car to go into homecoming. There's just this huge section of just f pure creative filmmaking and it was great. I, I, that entire scene, I've seen the film three times now and every single time I've loved that scene. And it's really a brilliant example of how to do like a reveal like that, because during no portion of the film is there even the slightest hint that Liz Allen could be Agent Toomes' daughter, and I think that was a really smart way of doing it, because, you know, he's going up, he's taking Liz Allen out, he's all happy, we just had this huge, great sequence right after the um, ferry incident, which you can see in the trailer, that... <clears throat> You know, he's getting good at school, he's enjoying himself, he's got this girl out on a date, it's going well, like, it's it's on the up. He's not as reliant on his Spider-Man stuff anymore, he's, you know, figuring out what he wants to be as Peter Parker as opposed to as Spider-Man, and then everything's going well, it's all the happy music, he turns up at the door, and then just, there's Michael Keaton. And the look on Tom Holland slash Peter Parker's face during that entire sequence is just phenomenal. You know, in the house, they're taking pictures, it's just, it's, it's tense and there's no music. Or at least I didn't notice any in that bit, there's definitely not in the car scene that follows it. He's like, oh my god, he's the person I've been fighting, he's, this, he's selling alien weapons to criminals that are doing awful things. And he's like, oh my god, this is who this is. And then... They get in the car, and Liz Allen is just feeding information unknowingly to Tombs and Peter's like, oh my god, stop saying that, because it, you can tell that Tombs is figuring it out slowly and slowly, and putting pieces together to figure out that Peter is Spider-Man, and there's no music up to that point, and there's some gorgeous cinematography, so they have like this kind of slightly wide shot of Michael Keaton where he's in the side of the frame, quite close, with Peter in the background out of focus, looking very small and insignificant compared to um, Keaton being very big and clearly quite powerful in that scene. And it cut, and when it's 
going at Peter. It's quite close in on him. It's tight framing. It's not giving any leading, so I'm just going to quickly look at my camera. So basically he's over at the side of the frame looking out of it, which, you know, there's no space in front of him, which as a sim like, framing technique, it kind of is there to make characters feel like closed in, because if you, for example, say, put a lot of space in front of them, it looks like they could go somewhere, because if you don't, obviously it doesn't, it has a very different effect. As I said, during that entire scene, there's no music up until the moment that Keaton's character realises that Peter is Spider-Man, and at the same time they're stopped at a set, like, a set of traffic lights, and it's on red and then he realises the music goes and then the light goes from red to green just at the moment and it's just this awesome bit of timing where it's like it just completely sells oh my god this evil person has just realised who this guy is he lets Agent Teams he lets Liz Allen go up into the school while he has a five talk with Peter and it's so casually done and it's not cliche like the he turns around and pulls a gun out of the glove box but anybody that wasn't doing this properly would probably get a close up of him reaching for the gun and getting it out and make a point of the gun to try and add some suspense but the fact that he just in one shot just reaches and pulls it and starts looking behind him it doesn't you know it's there, you see it's there. It doesn't focus on it and it's just it you just know it's there ready waiting. And but they're not making it a key feature. The key feature is the dialogue between Agent Tombs and Peter Parker. Which I just thought was a really, really smart way of doing this. Um speaking of Peter being very closed in the scene where he's trapped under the rubble of the building after he's tried fighting Vulture is a beautiful homage to the comics as a similar scene happens in and it's a fan favourite moment, uh, it's definitely one of my favourite moments showing Peter's willpower and resolve the terrified screaming in that scene of what is essentially a 15 year old kid was just heart wrenching. He was just there. There was no music, and he was just screaming for his life because he was so scared at first. It could have been extended a bit to add some more emotion and fear and stuff for him, but it was brilliant seeing him, you know, be like, "Come on, Spider Man!" and building up and put lifting all off of him and showing his strength and his willpower and his resolve to be a superhero. And at the same time. The Avengers theme, or a slightly twisted different take on the Avengers theme actually plays and it's just like this gorgeous little moment and Nod just showing, you know, this is the moment that he became an Avenger pretty much. This is the moment that he was like, no, I have to do this. I have to save people. I'm Spider-Man. And it was, it was on, it was just a brilliant moment. I re that scene was absolutely f brilliant. One thing I didn't like, and I do have to mention this, and it isn't Marvel's fault, but it's Sony's fault. And this is unsurprising, as any Spider-Man film fan or Spider-Man fan as a whole will know, Sony is pretty much the reason behind Spider-Man franchises failing in the cinema in the past. And in this case, it's making it fail, but it's just it was irritating, is how much was spoiled in the trailers. The end, they didn't spoil the entire plot, but there's certain there were some key moments that were shown in the trailer that just because you knew it was coming, it didn't have the same effect. I if I hadn't seen the trailers, it would have been whoa. But because they showed certain moments in the trailers, they didn't like they were still like oh wow, but they weren't quite as impactful as they could have been. For example. The ferry scene, you know, we know that Iron Man comes in and saves everybody. Similarly, at the very end of that uh, scene, when Tony is scolding Peter, Peter yells something along the lines of, if you cared, you'd actually be here, referencing earlier in the movie when he saved him, but it was wirelessly controlling the suit from somewhere else. And then Tony steps out of the suit 
and it was very much like a whoa god um you know this kid's in trouble now kind of moment but because we saw that in the trailers we knew he was in the suit so he knew that was going to happen so it didn't have quite the same impact as i say this isn't a fault with the movie those moments would have been a million times more impactful if they hadn't been shown in the trailers obviously you got to show something in the trailers but I just felt that even if you just had Iron Man coming in to save the day but not showing whether he did it you could have not shown him getting out of the suit to keep that moment as a surprise etc I think that would have worked a lot better hopefully whoever ruined those moments won't be walking home coming to and three, thanks for letting that slip, Tom Holland. Uh, I would have be, I will be avoiding the trailers for the next two Homecoming movies. The supporting cast of this film are also brilliant. Zendaya's MJ reveal at the end was a not full, it was a really fun nod to fans and showed off some character development. Zendaya, by the way, is brilliant. She's funny. She's a stunning girl, um, and. I think she's going to be a great love interest as an MJ going into the future. Uh, Ned was brilliant, uh, played by um, Jacob Batalon, I think is how you say his name, from when I was checking this. It's his debut performance in something out coming out of acting school or some sort of educational system where he was doing acting before this, and he really did nail it. I really enjoyed his character, and he was a great man in the chair for Peter. <laughs> Liz Allen, played by Laura Harrier in her first major role, was a fairly realistic, at least what I remember, representation of a high school girl and was a great first love interest for Tom Holland's Peter Parker. So to conclude, Spider-Man Homecoming is fantastic, it's fun, it's entertaining, it's got a great plot, the cast is just phenomenal. Again, gorgeous camera work, a great score and has really done justice to a character that Sony mistreated a lot in the past, which is clearly evident when you see this film. Again, if you have watched this review without watching the film, then hopefully this has made you want to watch it. Go see it, then comment below what you thought, and that goes to those of you who have already watched the film too. Drop a comment below, say what you think of the film, and if you agree or disagree with me on anything. Let's have a discussion about what I don't think anyone can disagree with is a very good film. Thank you all for watching. Adios.